Well, as you may have heard, the ABC's Fact Check Unit has accused Dick Smith of spreading misinformation in a radio interview about energy policy. Smith told 2GB listeners that no country could run on renewable energy alone. The ABC's fact checkers said Smith was wrong and they called upon a professor, Mark Z. Jacobson of Stanford University to testify on their behalf. Jacobson identified four national grids that run on renewable energy alone. The Albanian Power Corporation, the Nepal Electricity Authority, the Bhutan Power Corporation and the National Electricity Administration of Paraguay. Well, this is not particularly good news for those of us who fear that chasing net zero will damage our economy. You see, Paraguay, Albania, Nepal and Bhutan are poor countries, all of which sit in the bottom half of the world GDP rankings. In 2022, in fact, the gross domestic product per person in the four economies combined was US $2,550 a year. Not very much. Australia's, for the record, was US $65,100 a year. Smith, of course, was right. When you look at all the energy a modern economy consumes, which includes transport, agriculture, manufacturing and so forth, it's impossible to do all that with wind, solar and hydro, given the technology we have available. But of course, the ABC was mixing up energy, which includes all of the above, with power, which is basically electricity and gas. And yes, Paraguay, Albania, Nepal and Bhutan do produce 100% of their electricity with renewable energy. But it's not wind or solar, it's hydroelectricity, which means that the ABC's comparison has no relevance whatsoever in Australia, which is the driest, flattest continent on the planet. The only state in which hydro makes sense is Tasmania, Australia's dampest, hilliest and poorest state. Last year, Hydro Tasmania generated enough electricity to meet four-fifths of the state's demand. The marginal cost of production is low, which would make electricity in the island state cheaper if, if, then the, if, not, if it were not for the interstate agreement that obliges them to share their hydroelectricity with the mendicants in Victoria and elsewhere. Well, that could change if the next Tasmanian government sticks by its election promise. Both major parties pledged before the election to curb sales of hydroelectricity to the mainland and bring down household power bills in Tasmania. A hydro reservation policy, if you want to call it that, would undermine Chris Bowen's plans to turn Tasmania into the, battery's nation, the nation's battery. It would also weaken the highly speculative business case for a second undersea cable to the mainland, known as the Marinus Project. Yet uh, economist Saul S. Lake, surprisingly, condemned the Tasmania First Energy Policy as reckless. It would lead Tasmania down the Venezuelan path, he said, towards a socialist disaster. He told the Australian Financial Review, quote, they have oil coming out of their ears in Venezuela and because of that, they think they can sell petrol to Venezuelans at 3.5 cents a litre, he said. His argument is perverse. Uh, reducing Tasmanian retail power prices relative to other states would help the incoming government attract new investment, particularly in the power-hungry digital economy. The irony is that Tasmania could be self-sufficient in hydroelectricity if the green movement hadn't put the kibosh in it, on it in the early 1980s, aided and abetted by the Hawke Labor government. The Franklin Dam would have increased Tasmania's hydro capacity to four gigawatts, which comfortably would be more than the state's current demand. The Tasmanian government was overruled, of course, by the federal Labor government, and the following year that decision was endorsed by the High Court. Well, the rest is history. An effective moratorium on dam building has been in place for the last 40 years. Hydroelectricity's role as the energy villain in the morality play of progressive politics is now played by coal. Hydro, along with solar, wind and biomass, biomass or wood burning to the uninitiated, sits in the sacred ranks of renewable energy, an expression seldom heard outside the deep green circles in the early 1980s. Well, there's no point in crying over spilt milk or whinging about the Franklin Dam, what are we? 40 years later, the chances of revisiting the Franklin Project or any other hydro dam in Australia would probably be a step too far, especially with the Greens. 
which leaves a question hanging for the ABC's fact checkers. Has anybody managed an emissions-free electricity grid in the developed world without abundant hydro? Astonishingly, according to the ABC, the answer is yes. According to Professor Jacobson, California has been running entirely on wind, water and solar for, quote, 10 out of the last 11 days for between 0.5 and 6 hours per day. Well, the problem is that Californians, like Australians, need electricity for more than 0.25 hours a day, Professor Jacobson. And 10 out of 11 days really isn't good enough. What are we supposed to do when the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't shining? Sit in the dark, drink warm beer and sing songs to keep our spirits up?